There are various types of joints around the body, allowing for varying degrees of movement. There are three major types of joints, which are fibrous, cartilaginous, or synovial joints. And the amount of movement can be described as other synarthroses, which are immobile joints, amphiarthroses, which are movable joints, and diarthroses, which are freely movable joints. Fibrous joints are fixed joints, formed by fibrous tissue connecting the bones. There is no joint cavity. They are synarthrotic joints. Examples of synarthroses include sutures, which are immobile joints of the cranium, which are slightly mobile at birth, due to the presence of fontanelles, connective tissue between bones, which allows the head to move through the birth canal. As the head develops, the fontanelles reduce, and the bones eventually fuse to form sutures via intramembranous ossification, whilst gomphoses are immobile joints between the teeth and sockets in which they are embedded. Syndesmoses are slightly movable joints owing to the presence of an interosseous membrane. For example, in the forearm there is a syndesmotic articulation between the radius and ulna, and another between the tibia and fibula in the lower limb. Cartilaginous joints are formed by either hyaline or fibro cartilage. They are classified as either primary or secondary. Primary cartilaginous joints are formed by hyaline cartilage and are amphiarthroses or synarthroses. These exist between the epiphysis and diaphysis of growing long bone. Secondary cartilaginous joints can be formed by hyaline or fibrocartilage and are usually amphiarthroses, and a typical example is the pubic symphysis. Lastly, synovial joints are freely mobile joints, which are known as diarthroses and have a joint cavity. These are what one typically thinks of when referring to joints. A synovial joint contains a capsule, which surrounds the joint cavity, which contains a synovial fluid secreted by the synovial membrane. The articular surface is covered by cartilage. This cartilage allows for the smooth movement of the joint and prevents the two bone ends from making direct contact and causing damage with movement. These joints are then further categorized based on their structure and the movements they permit, which includes pivot, hinge, ball and socket, condyloid, saddle, and planar joints. Hinge joints occur when a convex end of one bone articulates with a concave end of another and permits movement in one axis, usually extension and flexion, as seen in the elbow and knee joints. Pivot joints occur when one rounded edge of a bone articulates with the rounded edge of another, and has a uniaxial movement. An example is the proximal radius ulnar joint pictured here, alternatively the atlantoaxial joint between C1 and C2. A saddle joint occurs when two articulating bones are saddle-shaped, allowing for biaxial movement. The first carpometacarpal joint is an example, allowing for thumb extension and flexion and abduction and adduction, providing humans with a characteristic trait of an opposable thumb. A condyloid joint is also known as an ellipsoid joint. Articulation occurs between a shallow depression and a round end. This is a biaxial joint, which allows for flexion and extension and abduction and adduction movements. This joint can be found at the metacarpophalangeal joint, also known as the knuckles. Like in hinge joints, the ball and socket joint occurs when a convex end of one bone articulates with the concave end of another. However, in a ball and socket joint, the convex end is like a ball permitting movement in multiple planes. This joint permits flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and as well as rotation. Planar joint is also known as a gliding joint. Articulating bones are usually both flat and of similar size. Movement can occur in multiple directions. It's multiaxial, but is often limited to small movements due to surrounding ligaments. As shown here, the intertarsal joints are an example. Similarly, is the intercarpal and acromoclavicular joint. Factoring all that has been covered in the video, which of the following best describes the knee joint? A biaxial joint, a saddle joint, a pivot joint, a uniaxial joint, or a condyloid joint? The correct answer is a uniaxial joint, as it's a hinge joint that permits movement in one axis. It allows for flexion and extension. It is important to recognize the different joint surfaces as fractures involving the joint, known as intraarticular fractures, require special consideration. They often require surgical intervention as the aim is to restore as much of the joint function as possible. Note that the fracture of the forearm are generally considered intraarticular given that a syndesmotic joint exists between the radius and the ulna. Additionally, osteoarthritis refers to the degeneration of articular cartilage of the synovial joint. Loss of this cartilage causes abnormal articulation between the bone surfaces, causing further damage to the bones. Post-traumatic arthritis refers to the degeneration of cartilage after an injury such as an intraarticular fracture. Note that opposable thumbs are a characteristic trait of primates. 
This simply means that primates can touch each finger with their thumb of the same hand. For monkeys and apes, it allows them to climb trees and gather food. In humans, it allows us to digitally manipulate objects around us and to fulfill many of our daily tasks, like brushing our teeth, getting dressed, opening doors, and writing. The saddle joint of the first carpo-mesocarpal joint allows for this to happen.